Over the past couple of weeks, I've had discussions with various people about what's the best way or the easiest way to get people set up with a Mac account inside your application, get the credentials over to them so they can log in. So I've given some thought to this and there's a number of different ways you can do this. I think when I first started uh, back a few, few years ago, um, I would have added a new account pretty much like this. So I would have added their name, their email address. Um, if I wanted their physical address, a phone number, probably uploaded a picture of who they were for their profile, which I would have had to ask them to send me. And then I would have set up a password, uh, save that into NAC, and then had to send them a separate email telling them what the uh, app URL is, obviously their email address and their password so they could log in. So what we're going to do in this video is to see um, different ways that you can simplify this and they will build and become more automated. So let's jump into looking at the first step, which is trying to get just the minimum amount of information into NAC and get them the credentials sent over to the user so they can complete the rest of it. Okay, so we're over in the builder and I have an accounts page and I have a button on a menu to add a new account, which takes me to the add account page. Now this is the page we was looking at a second ago. So I'll first of all want to remove all these additional fields, which I want them to fill in. So I'm going to get rid of the address, the phone number, the passport style photo of themselves. And also I don't want to have to uh, add a password. So I'm going to get rid of that. I want to NAC to generate the password for me. So I really just want to put their name and their email and then send them the credentials. So we're going to save that. So coming back into the live app, obviously do a browser refresh. And then when I now add a manager here, um, I just have the two fields. So I've added a name and an email address, but NAC requires a password when you're setting up a, an account. So if I just have these two fields, when I try to submit this, I will get an error message saying that a password's required. So back in the builder, this is the form that I just filled in. And how I would get around this is to create a rule and a record rule and add a rule that gives the uh, record a password. And I would just put the standard uh, a, a standard password in here. It would be the same for everybody because we will change it in the next step. So before I do that, I'm just going to come over into the settings. So under the user logins, I'd recommend secure the individual pages with a login and the passwords must include, I normally set them as shown here. So minimum eight characters, no common words, a number, a special character and lowercase. So I'm just going to save that. So back to pages and then click on add an account. So I'm going to set my rule and a records rule is when this form submits, it's going to set the password to a custom value. And I use a little Chrome plugin called Strong Password Generator. And, and this will just give me a, a 12 digit character. I'm just gonna do a couple of tries here to make sure I get one with a special character. Okay, so I'm just gonna copy that, paste that into Notepad. And as you can see here, we have a, a 12 digit password. It's got a dollar sign in it. It's got numbers, uppercase and lowercase. So I'm going to use that as my default password whenever we set up an account. So I'm going to save that. Also on the rules, when that form submits, I want to set um, some other parameters. So I'm just going to add a couple of other options. One is that the user status, I want to set the user status to being active. And I also want to set the uh, user roles to being a, a manager and their application is currently incomplete. So you have, you'll obviously have different user roles, but the example I'll build on this one will have an incomplete profile. So I'm going to save that, do a refresh. So I'm now going to add an account, put the same details in before as before and submit. So that's now added it to the top of my table. If we go into the builder and into records, I can now see that I have Maria added here, her email address and a password, which is obviously anonymized here. But that is the password I set as the record rule. And she has a user account set as active and a user role as manager incomplete. Now for the eagle-eyed among you, that you'll notice there are some additional columns in the accounts object, which I've added. Um, a random password, initial password, first name, and then over on the right-hand side, credentials sent, 
user completed their account, yes, no, and user completed their account date time. So I'm just gonna look at these in the fields view and just run you through what the logic is behind these. So what I want to do is I want NAC to produce a random password for me. And then the initial password, I'll grab the randomized password and write it to the initial. Reason being is every time the record is updated, NAC produces another random password. And I want to just grab that at a moment in time and set it as the initial password. We will then use that initial password to update NAC's actual password field. The other fields in here are the first name field. And if you haven't used a text formula to extract a first name, this is looking at the name field. So on the name field, you'll be aware that it splits records into the first name and second name. So for instance here, your first name here and your second name. And what we can do with the uh, with a, a get function is to extract the first name or the second name. So in the fields view, uh, you can add a text formula. And in the function, I just remove this, you can use a get function and you can extract bits from addresses as well. But we want to scroll down a bit and look for names. So you can take the title, first name, middle name, last name. So we just want the first name. And then you just need to define the field that's coming from. So I'm just going to put my cursor in between the brackets and on my fields object, I'm just going to take name and save that. And that will extract the first name from the name field. And the reason I want to do that is to personalize the uh, welcome email when the credentials are sent. So rather than it just say, uh, dear Maria Casson, it says, dear Maria. So the other fields I mentioned, if I just go back to the fields view, there's a field, a date timestamp, which is when we sent the credentials. So on the user side, they'll press a button to send the credentials. And when that happens, we'll capture the date and time. Further on in the process, we'll also want to know when the user updated their account. So whether it's been updated, so that's a multi-choice field and that's just set to yes or no with the default being no. So all new accounts have not been completed. And when it has been completed, we have a date timestamp which once again, we set with a record rule. So there's some additional fields. So on the random password field, you may remember earlier, I set my uh, NAC password criteria to be a minimum of eight characters, special characters, lowercase, uppercase, etc. So with the random password, this just generates um, 10 uh, alphanumeric digits, uppercase, lowercase, and numbers, but doesn't do special characters. And with a random number, there is a possibility that it may only produce lowercase or all uppercase. So I just want to make sure. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add in some additional numbers to it. Now on my table, I always have a kind of a must have field of an auto increment field, which just gives a unique sequential number. So I know that there's always going to be a number in this field. And then what I'm going to do is add an uppercase, a lowercase and one special character. So I'm going to go back into this field and edit it. So before the word random, I'm just going to click in front of here and from my fields object, I'm going to pick my auto increment. So that in this case is going to put a nine in front of it. So click to the right of the brackets and I'm also going to put uh, an upper C for classic and a small C for clips. And I'm going to add a um, exclamation mark. So that's my special character. So what NAC will do is put the auto increment in uppercase C, lowercase C, exclamation mark, then a random 10 digit alphanumeric number. So I'm just going to save that. And if I just update Maria's record by clicking on her name and saving it, you can now see that it starts nine, upper C, lower C, and then an exclamation mark. And then after that, this is the random number. So what I want to do um, is put the random one into here now, because every time I update Maria's record, you'll notice that this random password changes. The first part, 9cc uh, uh, exclamation mark remains, but everything else updates. So you can do that quite simply. This is just a text field. So if I just look at the field settings here, short text field, and it was going to take the password. But what we can do is add a conditional rule. And the conditional rule is uh, has a criteria. And what we're saying is if this random, if this, I'm sorry, if the initial password field, which is the field we're working on. So if this initial password field is blank, so in other words, it has nothing in it, then set it to a field value. And that field value is the random password. So I'm just going to update Maria's record now, and it's going to put in a password based on the last update. Now, whenever I update this, the, the random password changes, but the initial password remains the same. So I now have a kind of static customized password, which meets my criteria and is unique.
The next step will be to get this password into the actual password field here. So back on the live app, I have a button here which will pop up a modal box to send credentials. And this is simply editing the account record. So I've got their name and email on here so it can be changed. And when this form submits, it does a couple of things. It sends an email to the, to the new recipient for login credentials. And it also does some record rules to update in the background. So we'll have a look at that form. So if I go back into the builder. So this is my accounts page and I can click on the orange arrow here, which will take me to the same page. But obviously on the left hand side, I can see here, this is the page called send credentials. So if I click on the send credentials and click on the form itself, you can see here that this form updates the account record. So this is an effectively an edit form. So there's some rules on here. If I just expand this out a little bit, there's a the record rules. And what it does, the record rule sets the password. So this is the actual NAC password field. It sets that password field to a field value. So when this form is submitted, this record rule will change the password field to the field I created at the short text, which is the initial password. It will also update the credential sent, which is the date time field, and set that to the current date time. So once the form has been sent, updates the password, marks it as sent with the date time stamp. So just go back a level, and back another level into emails, when the form's sent, it also sends an email, sends this information. And uh, if you're not familiar with emails, I'm not going to spend time going through this in detail, but uh, we construct the email and put the fields in here. So uh, I've got the name dear, and then this is the first name. So if I just delete that, you can get the names from this drop down. So these are all the names in my accounts object. So if I put the name field in here, that would have the first name and the second name. But because I stripped it out using the get first name, I can just put the first name field into there and then put a comma after it. And then it says, please use the blog login credentials. So this is the URL for my uh, NAC app. And you'll notice it ends with the word home. So every, uh, there's, there is only one URL. I have a, another video, uh, which I'll reference uh, called homepage redirects. So that there is one URL for your app. Everyone arrives at that and then we redirect them after the event. So rather than using separate URLs for separate user roles, uh, you can just use one URL. It then puts in their email address and I'm putting in here the initial password. So that's the password that we set from the random one. If you put NAX password in there, it anonymizes it with just dots. So then when the recipient receives the email, they have no idea what their password is. So you need to make sure you put that static initial password one in there. And then I've just finished it off with a little bit of text at the bottom. So I'm just going to save that. So I'm back in my live app now, just on a browser refresh to make sure I'm up to date. And uh, I'm going to click on the send button on the right hand side. That pops up my form. Uh, so just a note to the user saying it will send login credentials to the person below. Uh, they could change this information here. So update this information, update the email address if they notice it's incorrect. But once this form is submitted, it will update the password, mark the form uh, with the credentials or mark the record with the credentials and then run the record, the rule to send the email. So I'm just going to submit. And as we can see from here, the record has now been updated. So you can see that the credentials were sent and the email has been pushed through and received. So it says, Dear Maria, so we stripped out the first name here. That's my app URL, obviously their email address and their password. So these would be enough of the credentials for them to be able to sign into your application. In the next video, we're going to look at what happens when they log in and how we can ensure that we have a process in place to capture their address, their phone number and their passport style photograph.